What's going on, everybody? This is Serge Vicente, the host of the Fight Podcast, the greatest combat sports and culture show in the entire universe. That guy, I, I'm, I'm happy about today's episode, man. I uh, have, honestly, somebody I follow for a long time, man. One of, honestly, stylistically one of my favorite fighters, man. Um, Anthony Njigwani, man. This dude is a beast. He has, I mean, legitimate vet of the game, man. WEC, UFC, one championship, man. Pro MMA, pro Muay Thai. Uh, this dude has done it all. So, without further ado, man, in our little quarantine of combat, let's go ahead and bring on Anthony Njigwani on the show. Brother, what's going on, man? Welcome to the Fight Podcast. What's up, man? Hey, thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate that. Absolutely, man. Well, look, man, I, I for real, like I, I was telling you a little bit about it before we kicked it off, man. Really happy to have you on, man. Super excited about it. Uh, been a fan for a long time. Obviously, like I said, I'm um, 34, grew up in Chicago, wanted to, uh, like I said, started kickboxing. And uh, obviously, once you start, you know, kickboxing, I was like, man, I'm going to do some MMA. I ended up uh, linking up with guys like Shoney Carter and and uh, Brian Gassaway and a whole bunch of dudes out there, man. And uh, and, and they, they took me under the wing and I started training there, man. So uh, you were one of the ones that they told me to check out, man. Okay. Oh, shit. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know people were talking to oh. somebody like that. Fan, well, we have- I, I thought that was that dark skin. I was swept under the table, you know? <laughs> no, brother, not at all, man. Hey, check it out, man. Look, the, the fact is, we already know. And honestly, one of the big things for me, the reason I really wanted to start this show, and, and again, this is episode 206. Um, I've been doing this for uh, over two years now, man. And that one thing is, for me, there's not enough. Right. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. We're working, man. We're, try- we're grinding away, man. We're trying to finally get noticed by uh, everybody else. <laughs> You guys are doing it, man. Pretty soon, you guys are gonna be having like a million followers and shit. You probably already have it now, huh? Nah, bro, not even close. <laughs> not even close, but but dude, but you know what, man? It's uh, because what my focus for the last little bit, honestly, was fi- figuring out the quality. You know what I'm saying? And I wanted to make yeah. sure that as a personality, as an interviewer. Um, I want to make sure that I was actually putting everything out that I needed to. I want to make sure that, you know, I was on top of my game um, because I understand what it is to be in that realm. I used to compete myself. Um, Unfortunately, for some health reasons, I wasn't able to continue going pro, but I love the sport. And one thing I'm sure, as you know, man, uh, for us, there's they they don't the mainstream media does not give us the credit that I thoroughly believe that you know black and brown folks deserve in the sport. Hey, I, I know exactly Dog, what you're talking about. And and and, and, and for I've been, me, I've been in this thing for like how long, bro? I gave them pretty dope fights. Come on, man. Uh, let me know how many people know about me. <laughs> and, that's, and to me, it's like a nuts, bro. It's nuts. I mean, between you and your brother, bro, Chitty. I mean, you guys go out there and stylistically you guys have such a fun style you know what i'm saying a fun style people want people that and and that's what i think i hate they always talk about you want people who's gonna stand up and strike with you well we have we got guys we have guys and here's the thing and the thing i always want to bring into account actually show people is as you already know there are there's a lack of representation in terms of black and brown folks in terms of of mma media so no one's going to pay attention to us if it's not one of us actually bringing it out there. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, or, elevate or that. What was that? Or acting ignorant. Then Bro. then we'll put then we'll be placed out there. Oh. Now, if we're acting ignorant and acting like they say black, yeah. Oh, give, giving us all oh, the we'll be We'll be welcome. <laughs> but I would, never, I would never speak myself that low in order to just be well known, you know? And it's funny, man, because I think there's there's more more like like you out there that and here's the thing. It's skill wise. You, you have the skills. You guys have always had the skill set. And again, like I said, it's a fan friendly style. So you would think that they'd actually push those things. But you're right, man, unless you out there. What is it like slapping strippers and, and, and getting DWIs and whatnot, man, they're not going to give you the, the, the props that you deserve. So why would what, what mm-hmm. you think about but then, that? But then you can also you can also go out there, give them exciting fights, be a champion. But the minute that you do fuck, you mess up. Oh, oh, there's that, that black guy. Oh, bro, <laughs> even better yet, I mean, look, look at Tyron Woodley. Tyron Woodley did everything yeah. right for I don't know how long, and they could not wait. They couldn't wait for him to lose. The moment he took an L, no, yeah. we're still waiting for that man to fight. <laughs> 
It, 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 they're putting him on the sideline, and, now they're just, and then then they're also waiting for him to fuck up. Once he fucks up, or can I say that? Bro, fuck it, damn all. <laughs> okay. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> when they, when they he gets into trouble, then that's when they'll start blasting him out there even more. Absolutely. Because they're waiting for that. Oh man. Yeah. He already lost his championship, but the thing is, he didn't lose his championship to I hate to say it, to a Caucasian guy. If he lost his championship to a, a white guy, then it'll be a completely different oh, story right about now. But he lost it to another black guy. Mm-hmm. And Usman's a great fighter. Usman's from Dallas, just like I am. And he has high accolades in wrestling. But please tell me why that they're not promoting Usman like how he should be promoted. Now, and if, uh, what's that? Sorry for any Trump supporters on here, that Trump He's supporter that if he would If he was out there like Kobe. Yeah. If that fool would have won, if, if that fool won then you already know, they would have blasted him out there like a superstar. But they're not doing it to the... Usman and Usman's a great fighter. I like Usman's style. I've been knowing Usman way before he got into UFC. And Usman's a great dude, and he should be blasted out there like how, how he should be. But because he's a different color, yeah. And, 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 and the thing about Usman, I really do believe, and I want to ask you about Usman, man, because again, we're talking about that Nigerian connection. I swear, Africa is crushing MMA right now. I mean, everybody, you're looking at everything from one, you got, you know, I mean, multiple champions in the UFC, you have, you know, Sadiq Yusuf in the UFC, we got all these guys, and it's coming really from, you know, one spot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, and and it's, um, yeah, but one thing I want to say about about um, about Usman is this, it's, it's incredible when I see somebody as talented as him, and he, he is starting to get better on the mic, I'll give him that. But he he literally went yeah. out there and beat one of the top two to three greatest welterweights of all time, and he isn't getting the props that he deserves. And I'm sure it is, like you said, it is from the type of guy that he is. It's a little bit again, it's about the skin tone, all the all the above. Um, but with that, we're seeing you know Adesanya, we're seeing that that jump from you know Africa and the Nigerian guys. Man, what what? How do you feel just being from Nigeria, man? Nigerian boy, like. How does that feel for you seeing that? Shoot, hey, bro, I'm I'm proud of him. Hey, if, I, if I could wear my chief suit, yeah. my chief suit right now, <laughs> I, I'm actually very proud. And I'm actually glad that I was like the first Nigerian to even step into UFC. That's what's and up. they said I just started off, and I'm happy about that. And now we got not just one champ, not just one UFC champion, but two of them. Two. 185 and 170. So I'm very proud of my Nigerian people. Oh, dude, and, and you guys. And I, hope they, and I hope they keep on doing it. Don't allow nothing that these people are saying to them. The mistake that I always made is how when when I was fighting for UFC is when they told me to make sure you go out there, you 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 go out there and put everything on the line. No, what you need to do is just go out there and fight. Wait, don't yeah, worry about that. Don't win. worry about if you get the bonus, you get the bonus. Mm-hmm. But if you don't get the bonus, then you you got your pay. But just go out there, put on a good show, and then that's it. That's all you need to worry about. Because once you hear that, go out there and fight, make sure you put everything online, go out there and do what you need to do, then you'll start like making all these mistakes and then try to rush into a fight and then what happens? You get you get KO'd or you lose a fight over some uh, stupid mistake that you make, like rush in, yeah. try to knock the person out. Yeah, just go out there, be you know, just be free, have fun and relax. Stay relaxed in there. Dude, it, That's all you really have to do. It, it, it's funny you say that too, man, because you're seeing a lot of people, especially with everything that's going on with uh with, with COVID-19, and honestly, bro, I hope everything's going, I hope you're doing well, hope the fam and everybody's doing well, because this shit's crazy. Uh, but... It, I'm staying within my dome, man. I'm staying like... Who you tell <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Straight up, man. Oh, Jay, you, you sneeze or you... Uh, Small little cop, I'm running my ass on the opposite way. I ain't coming around nobody. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm over here. You walk <laughs> down the street. I might, be, uh, I might be African with the with the African uh, great uh, immune system, but I want to put that immune system to the test, you know? <laughs> Yo, straight up, man. I see everybody's walking outside looking like ninjas and bandits, and I'm okay. I'm right there with them. <laughs> you know People are wearing hazmat suits and shit. You got those little uh, big ass uh, face masks with the little breather on the side. Bruh. I saw that at Walmart. Could you believe? That's crazy. Dog, I, I saw this dude go out there with a pan, like the top of a pot, and he put it in yeah. his face and he pulled the hoodie on over it. So he looked like he literally was Bubble Boy 
walking around with this pot lid on his glass pot lid on his face, <laughs> going to the store. Dude, hold that so you can see. <laughs> Bro, no, no, I'm saying he had the, the, the glass joint. The, oh, the clear? Yeah, the clear joint. Oh. So he had it on his face, oh. man. Looked like a straight astronaut. <laughs> That's like so many, so many areas that air can like see through. Like, come up, man. I, I saw, I've seen that. I've seen all kinds of wild stuff, man. People, especially, dude. In, the internet is undefeated. They they showed us all the, the the tomfoolery out there, man. Is nuts. Um, but but let me ask you this, man. One thing that I think is really dope. And again, we're we're noticing again. I'm seeing again sticking with you know uh, Nigeria. We have Adesanya, right? He's out there, and it's somebody that, and I want to kind of talk about with specifically like your style, right? This is a strike first guy, right? We're starting to notice a lot more, I don't want to say traditional kickboxers. We're getting guys who are high-level kickboxers making their way into MMA. We've seen the jiu-jitsu wave. We've seen the boxing. We've seen the wrestling wave. Now we're starting to see these, a lot of big guys, you know, the kickboxers. And honestly, you were one of the guys that was like the leader of the new school, essentially. You know what I'm saying? Coming out there with the, that kickboxing mentality, how do you how do, when you see it, man? Where do you see kickboxing in terms of the the hierarchy of skills that people need to know? And when you see that, like, are you seeing stuff where Adesanya is doing? It's like, damn, like that's I, I like how he's doing that. The one thing I, I do like about Adesanya is he uses his mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying? well, everybody. Like right at the end of his punches, and he's very, he's extremely slick. Yeah, he's extremely extremely slick fighter. That's why people it takes you have to like like throw heavy bombs. No, not I wouldn't say heavy bombs. Heavy bombs on top of uh, let's say uh, using um, in and outs and feints yeah. in order to be able to catch. Yeah, in order, and especially in order to be able to throw them away. But he's so slick at it. Yeah, but nobody people don't understand that. That's what you have to do in order to hit this guy. Or even like lay lay a hand on him. So it's gonna be a very long time before. Well, hopefully, it's gonna be a very long time before anybody can outstrike that kid because he's he's the truth, especially in, especially in that stand up area. And he's lucky that nobody as as a good stand up as he is at in the one eighty five right now. No, no. But they, I don't, they're saying that uh, I forgot that uh, Brazilian guy's name. Holocaust. Yeah, they're saying that. I don't see it. I don't see it. I'm gonna keep it a buck. From what, from what they're saying, they saying like he's the Brazilian uh, uh, in, uh, Ngannou. Do you see that? I, I have I haven't seen him fight yet. But. Okay, so look, I, I'm gonna be honest. So I'm gonna keep it a, a buck. I don't see it. I I, I don't think yes. he's I don't think he's fast enough. I don't think he's slick enough. Um, I've never seen him set up his shots. He he utilizes his his size, um, his strength. He's extremely athletic, but um, okay. well, we also got to think about this is a guy that realistically hasn't competed in martial arts very long. Um, he used to be a, a powerlifting dude. He ended up falling into it within the last. Oh, that's why he's like, yeah, yeah, that's why he's all jacked, and he fell into it. He said over the last five or six years or so. When you're talking about somebody who's been kickboxing, has over 80 professional kickboxing fights, it, it's a different beast. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you're going in there with him, especially in terms, at least for me, the competition. Um, he's tough as hell. He's big. I thought he lost to to um, Yoel Romero. Uh, Who, uh, Acosta? Acosta, yeah. Yeah, I thought Acosta. Or... I thought they both, I mean, no, no. I thought Adesanya beat Yoel. I, Yoel didn't do nearly enough. He, he, yeah, man. That from all that talk that people were saying, okay. like he highly disappointed. He highly disappointed me. I, I'm not saying that uh, that I wish that he beat Adesanya. It, it's just the fact that how he normally performs. Yes. That he didn't perform like he normally performs, and in, in order to give a good fight, yeah. that's that's the area that he disappointed me on. Because I've seen him give out like I've seen him like do. Matter of fact, we we fought on the same car together one time when he threw the flying knee and knocked that kid out. Oh, and man. he actually beat me that night that night because I fought uh um uh, what's that kid uh the one I knocked out with the left hand I knocked him out with the left hook. Bro, don't give me. And he beat me for nothing. You you know I I, I was I, like I you, got Google brother I will find out exactly which one it was don't get don't get it twisted <laughs> I just have you I had your record pulled up as it is. 
Yeah, because that, that was the first day. Because when I saw that fight in the back, when I was warming up, I was like, yeah, man, that, that motherfucker's going to be a, a handful. <laughs> and I, I thought that they were going to, I thought once they stepped into that, and then all the stuff that he was talking about before, talking before the fight, Bro, I thought he was going to give up this. Uh, drop into one knee, like giving him, giving Edesanyo uh, a reason to, uh, a way to be able to knock him out. Like, why are you doing that, bro? Dog. And, and you know what? <laughs> like, I'm gonna be honest with you. I hate, and I think you you could attest to this being a striker. I hate, I hate when people sit there and they go out there and they try to say, um, "Oh, when you beat Roger Bowling, that dude." Yeah. 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 That's him. Yeah. That's him. yeah. Man. Yeah. My. Yeah. Same. Dude, that, that was yeah, that, the fucker that was, beat me. Dude, yeah, the fucker beat me for nothing. A nasty dude. Oh, that's that's uh, oh, that has to. So when you get a good knockout, you're like, I got it. This is it. I know I got it. Yeah. And you're like, oh. throughout that whole night, like, yeah, throughout that whole night, nobody else knocked out anybody. And here comes this fucker. He throws that. I think he threw it like a flying knee and knocked that knocked homeboy out. The dude that uh, I think was the guy that trained with um, with GSP. I think that's who he knocked out that the, night. Um, the the big black dude, the the thick yeah. dude. Yep. I, I, yeah, and and, that, yeah, and he was looking was good it. too. That guy, and it's the thing about dude, he always looks good. The thing that bothered me about this fight, and I think you could probably attest to this, I hate when people say strikers run. Strikers are not running. We're getting angles, and we're not sitting there trying to be punching bags. I think that like there's a big difference in that, and it's amazing to me right. that. Um, MMA mm-hmm. media doesn't talk about that. Nobody talks about that. Like just being a striker, when you see that, and you hear people talking, essentially talking shit about strikers. When you see that, man, what goes into it for you? When I see that, I was like, I, I'm. I never want to argue with anybody that like that because I know that they don't know what the hell they're talking about. But they gotta understand you're playing. You're playing a a a, a smart game with your opponent. You don't want to play a dumbass game and then be. One of these fighters that can continue fighting at the age of 35, they got to retire because they've been through like so many battles. But if you play a smart game and prolong your be able to prolong your career, then I would rather take that versus then go out there and, and be get my head bashed in. Max. Yeah, yeah I'm- in the middle of the ring. So yeah, so if they want to, so if they want to call me a boring, if they want to call that person a boring striker, then so then so be it. At least that is playing a much better game than the next person that's uh, then. You can watch that next person that's gonna go out there and stand and stand and bang in the middle of the middle middle of the cage. If you want to see somebody so, stand and bang in the middle of the cage, go watch bare knuckle fighting. <laughs> yeah. But then you see how long those fuckers last. <laughs> they don't last that long. Dude, and then half of them can't can even talk, can articulate correctly with you. Absolutely, man. So, well, it, yeah. it, the, the the way that the combat sports game has grown is nuts, man. Um, for yourself. Your 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 you've been your last couple fights were Muay Thai with one. I personally love what one championship has been doing. Um, it, everyone that I've spoken to that's revolved around the organization really seems like they enjoy it, man. How has your experience been with one? My experience with one, it has been a wonderful experience. I love one. I love the way they treat uh, treat their fighters. They treat their fighters with a lot of respect and a lot of love. Wow. And they do like they do a lot for their for their fighters, and they're not they actually like look at them as as fighters and not just as you know just that person, right, right, just entities. So they look, yeah, they got money, facts, you know. Yeah. So uh, they do a lot for us. Mm-hmm. They'll make sure that we're okay before we do anything else. They'll give us like three or four CT scans before they even allow us to. To fight really? and and with this whole uh, weight cutting thing, so there that's a good thing that they're that's another good thing that they're actually looking out for their fighters is the whole weight cut. You can't cut any weight right. at all. So whatever you, you walk around that. So that's let's say, at. yeah, majority of every fifty five of fight weight, fight shape is supposed to walk around at least one sixty five mm-hmm. to one. Okay. So if you're not in that area, then you're considered a lightweight. Right. right. If you're you're about like uh, 195 to, and so you have to stay. Uh, 70 pounders have to stay around in that area. Okay. Okay. 85 pounders around two two uh, things like uh, 210 or 220. Okay. So you can't drop that. So if they if they see that you drop some of that, so when you get into fight shape, you have to be in fight shape weight. 
So flat shade weight would be for me. It would be like one sixty seven because that's where I normally get down to when I'm flat shade weight. That you you so, must feel and, great. That's one thing. I, yeah, bro, you feel. I when when I used to cut down to like one fifty five, I used to feel like shit. And trying to uh, and trying to recover, trying to get all that weight back, it still was tough. Yeah, I made it to like one seventy, but I still felt like right. shit. But then fight day, I feel much better at fight day, but I'm still feeling kind of weak until I start until I like goes down like a a gallon of water like in the back right, or something right. like that. And then that's when I start feeling. So the day of the fight, that's when I start feeling better. And you can't possibly Those, be having the best performances if you're that you know essentially sucked down. You know it can't happen. So you, your your performances for you, do you feel like they've been better since you've been com competing with one? They have. I feel much stronger fighting at 167 than I did at 55. Mm -hmm. I feel a lot more faster, mm -hmm. and I don't feel so much uh, so sluggish. That's great. Because and I feel like I feel like my mind is able to actually work better mm -hmm. when I'm fighting at 167 versus 155. Yeah. Because I feel more free, so that's why I like what they're doing over there versus out here. They really need to pick up on that. They seriously do. They don't have much fights if they if all these organizations bring that over to to them to that. I, I really think I agree with you, man. I think that would be one of the best bets for it, man. I, it seems like for you guys, if that's the best for you, you know what I'm saying, and you felt the best and everything, why wouldn't they take that on? Um, unless you didn't want to have the best possible, you know, performances. To me, that doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like the way one is doing is awesome. I don't understand why in, like Bellator you just see them just wanna do that. I think they'll have much and they wouldn't have like so many fighters like uh backing out of fights because they have to go to the hospital because they're dehydrated, you know? I think all those problems would would, would not exist anymore mm -hmm. if they would like go into this type of system that they're doing over at one. Man. Um being that you you've competed and WEC, UFC, one man, you've had an amazing career. You fought at some of the best organizations in the not even some. You fought at the best organizations in the world. Um, how has the how has how, how has like being a veteran in the game now, man? Being able to, to be in all of those. How has those experiences in this in your career to this point have been? Like, how do you see like that journey from being in WEC, UFC has been great. But now moving on to the championship has been it's been something like completely different than I've ever experienced with all these other ones. And I, I think with the people that I fought, I've had like a great career and I showed the world uh, what type of fighter that I am. Absolutely. I've never backed down. I've never backed down from <clears throat> any fights. I've never been given any easy fights. <laughs> Every no. single fight that I've had has always been like top ten, mm -hmm. top ten. Top 10. And then, and I feel and I feel very proud of myself from where I start from where I started off at to where I am. And I and I'm glad that I can like label. I can say, yeah, I fought this person. I fought this person. I fought this person. Yeah. I lost this person. I won this person. I even be that uh, a K1 champion, uh, six time K1 champion. I beat him. And I he he, he even be, yeah he even beat Bokal. So I'm very proud about that. So Dude, I never. I never got any recognition for it, but I'm very proud. Of, I'm very proud of myself that I actually Bro, did. Why I, I, haven't you gotten recognition for that? Because even when you look at it, like I saw that on like one of one sheets, but all the share dogs, MMA fighting, all the fight metrics, nobody talk. Why is that not on there, bro? Because I know about that uh, fight. Bro, I don't. Ray Seppo didn't even know I did that. Ray Seppo thought I was full. Ray Seppo thought I was lying until I showed him. Because Ray Seppo couldn't even believe it. Because yeah. nobody was blasting. People weren't blasting it out like that. And for those who don't there's a know, lot. it's Andy Sauer. Okay? Andy Sauer is yeah. one of the greatest kickboxers of all time. And you beat him. <laughs> Dude, he beat one, he be one of the greatest uh, Muay Thai fighters in the world. He beat Book Out. Like, come on. And I ended up beating him. Dog. Like, Yo, it's, how was that I can feeling? say that I'm, I'm very proud of that. That you should be huh? proud of that, man. Oh, That's amazing. Oh, what? <laughs> They, when they rose my hand, it was like the greatest feeling of my life. Because then that's when I was like, you know what? I can do this. 
when I left UFC, and that was like my debut uh, fight with uh, one championship. And when I beat him, and I was like, I I can do this. And I, that's when I told myself I can do this. Like, fuck all that shit that happened in UFC, fuck losing my contract with UFC. When I beat him, everything just came back to me. And I was like, yeah, I can do this. There's nothing, that, that, that is like, you talking about a feather in your cap, bro? Beating Andy Sauer is it, and again, if people don't uh, don't know the kickboxing game, man, it, it's uh, I, I first of all, I don't get why people don't pay attention to kickboxing more. Now, that's one thing that I love that one is doing, um, because you, you know it's funny. Everybody always talks shit. Oh, why are they on the ground? Oh, why are they doing this? But we have a yeah, sport that's all striking with all the moves that we like, and nobody pays attention to it. Yeah. So I'm happy that one. There's is doing. The- they're sleeping on one. They need a people. One, what one needs to do is just have a show out here one one time. Absolutely. Absolutely. If they can have a show on the states once one time, I bet you people will love it just like how they love Pride. Because the fighters that they have in one, I'm telling you, if they all came to UFC or Bellator, they would demolish any of those fighters. And look, I love Eddie I, Alvarez. I, I don't know. I think, yeah, I, I love him. He went out there thinking. He went out there thinking, I, I like Eddie, I yeah. like Eddie too. I, when I went out there to help Ed some barbells and get ready for Cowboy, we all trained, we all trained together. He's a great dude. Yeah, yeah. But they were all thinking, especially the little pretty boy kid who hasn't fought nobody Bro. that's getting all this recognition. Why'd they give him Cosmo? For, Why'd they give him Cosmo? Man? For, <laughs> Bro, because he he's super. <laughs> man. Because he, he thought he was super. He thought he could beat everybody. And the funniest thing is I was talking to uh, uh, Uriah hit me up about him. So Uriah was talking to me about Cosmo the day of that fight. And they didn't know anything about Cosmo. And I was like, bro, y'all better be ready because Cosmo ain't, he's no slouch. And then that's when I found out that Cosmo actually did MMA. I didn't even know that. He had, I think he had he's, like two uh, or was, three fights when he was with the Black Zillions. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I didn't even know that. Dude, he was, uh, and he's a uh, purple belt. I think he's now in the brown belt in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I was like, bro, <laughs> y'all are in for a he's, he's another one. Fought Nikki Holskin a couple times. Now, granted, Nikki dealt with yeah. him one. Yeah. But he has some big kickboxing wins, man. Oh, man. Cosmo's a beast. <laughs> that was. Dude. What... I remember when he was fighting for line fights out here. Yeah. Yeah, that was the first time I became a, a fan of Cosmo. Dude. Yeah, he was he was dro- he was dropping people like he like a uh, uh, a fly hitting a uh, uh, bug spray. <laughs> he was dropping them bad. Dude, the worst he KO. Left and right. He has one of the worst KOs I've ever seen. He he cracked this one dude. Dude falls and he catches him with the knee right as he's falling down. Yeah, when he uh, yeah he front tripped. Yes. He front he front tripped him. Yep, that's so it. he front tripped yep. him. Down him with the same leg that he front tripped him with. Mm. That shit was that shit was impressive. That's how I do that one time. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to do it in the gym. I don't know if I was playing if I planned my leg right or if I was pushing it right or what. Or I was hitting the right spot on their leg. Yeah, but it didn't work. Dude, yo, <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was a crazy it was a crazy ass knockout. Damn, I could I can't even drill that on the bag the right way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know, bro. That was I was trying my best to. Maybe it was a person that I was going up against, like uh, one of our heavyweight fighters. I was trying to do it on him. Yeah, it's just too thick. But then I was like, <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it was. He was just too heavy for for my little ass. You know, you know? but uh, I was trying. Fuck! Why is this motherfucker move, uh, falling forward? Bro. And I should try to sweep him again. I him again until he like started coming forward on me. Maybe if I was doing, maybe I think I was doing it right. I wasn't timing it correctly. Right. But yeah, that, he did it, man. That shit was like so impressive. But dude, yeah. you, but you hit it. But one has I'm monsters. Getting... Like there's yeah. monsters in one, and people don't pay attention to it, man. And and I and I hope that one day there is a like, essentially like a Super Bowl at the end of the year with all the um, the organizations and all the champs fight each other. That's what I want to see. I, I know Dane is not for that shit, but I'm all about it. <laughs> like, like Dane is not going to. Yeah, if he can't, if he can't have control, he ain't down for it. because well, he should he should have had like a super fighting uh, Bellator like a long time ago, a super fighting uh, 
Elite, uh, Elite XC back in the day, a long time ago. Oh, uh, Strife back back in the day, a long time. Like all those organizations should have been having super fights, like how they do with WBA, WBO, uh, WBO, uh, WBC, uh, IBF, all that stuff. They, if if they all combined and did that kind of stuff, man, it'll just, it'll be MMA and kickboxing. I mean, well, MMA will be a whole lot better. People won't be having like have to worry. And about their job, really, yeah, because they can balance the organizations, you know. And, but, and it's more, like I said, it's more cash for everybody. Everybody yeah. has more cash to go around. And and I've always been somebody that's a proponent of everybody getting paid. So to me, when I'm seeing those things, I'm like, well, one, I hear people over there, especially one and things. And again, it's and I want to ask you, like, how is being in Asia, like, how has that experience been? Because I mean, as a fighter, as a fight fan. Japan, Singapore, all that shit. I grew up watching Pride. Like I think that's yeah. awesome. So that's why I love the I love what I'm seeing from one. It, it brings back those feels. Risen does also, but but one really does. You know what I'm saying? Um, how how has that experience been? What was that? I'm sorry. Well, yeah, because you're you're traveling all the way, <clears throat> all in different uh, Asian countries. So it's 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 actually been a great experience because I'm able to see all the Asian countries that I've always wanted to go and see. And I mean, with me growing up with Asian Asians, like all my life, so it's it's an, it was an experience. Yeah. But it's a, it, but I, I felt like it was already an experience I already had because all my friends I grew up with were Japanese, uh, Vietnamese, Chinese, Cambodian. Uh, I was half Chinese and half Vietnamese, so okay. it's but just going out there and seeing like the actual culture and seeing the difference. Yeah, it was it was. It was a wonderful experience, and I can't—I seriously can't wait to go back to Japan again. That's Japan awesome. and Singapore, That's those two places, hands down, the best place I've ever been to. Man. Dude, those are two yeah. very high oh, on my list. In Thailand, Thailand, I had a lot of fun in Thailand. Have you yeah, ever been? Have you been to a train out there? Yeah, yeah, we trained in uh, Sasi Prapa the first time. First time we went, we trained in Sasi Prapa. The next time we're gonna go to, uh, we're gonna go to Sasi Prapa again. Then we're gonna go to, uh, uh, I wanna go to AKA in yeah. Phuket. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, that'd be amazing, bro. Well, brother, look, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time today. I really appreciate your time, man. Seriously, bro, this has been awesome. I could talk to you all day. Uh, we're going to get you out here with a couple quick hits then, okay? A um, couple things. It's, 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 it's COVID time. We all in here, man. What have you been doing to keep yourself? With... I see the weights behind you, man. At least you look like you're out there still working out, yeah. man. You know, we'll get... yeah. what, what have you been we'll be doing? Getting Just getting it? <laughs> Um, right now, actually, just been working out in my in my home gym. You know, uh, finally been setting everything up and uh, just keeping busy with that. Keeping busy with like playing games with my girl. Um, I started going back into uh, car tuning, so I started tuning on my car. Okay. Yeah, I put like an exhaust. You know, yeah. So now I have that Fast and Furious car now. That's what's up. What kind of whip you at? Uh, Lexus IS. Uh, 350 yo smooth whip man it, it's i don't know what happened it seems like recently i started i just realized that lexus are dope again i feel like as a kid i'm like oh they cool and then i get now i'm like i'm 34 now i'm like damn these mugs are dope again <laughs> you can do like so much man because i had a is3 uh, i uh 2005 is300 okay. and i fixed it up i put a 2jz into that one and single turbo on that that motherfucker was sweet i love that car now with this one, I'm about to do the same thing because I have like so much free time. But the only bad thing is parts and all that stuff come uh, take so long to come now. But you know, do you just using this time to fix up, fix up the car that I've been wanting to fix up for like a uh, long time. It was it was my project car that I bought like what three years ago. That's what's up. Never got to it was like traveling and all that stuff. But now that I have this free time, I'm shit. I'm almost done. By the time all this stuff is done, the only thing that's next is just. Uh, Engine work and putting a single turbo on it. Well, that's what's up. Well, that means you, you oh, yeah. definitely got to put that on your social media, man. We got to see that when it's done. Oh, bit by bit. Like to, like today, <clears throat> I did a co-star on my new exhaust that I got. Okay. Yeah, I'm about to post that in a little bit. That's what's yeah. up. That's what's <laughs> up, man. All right, and, and two more things. Um, give me a classic fight. Well, people, again, in this time, man, get some corona and combat in, man. What around? What What is a classic fight that fight fan, if you're not a fight fan, you need to watch? A, a classic fight of mine or a classic fight of yeah give me one of your give me else's. one of yours give me one of somebody else's that one you like going back and talking and watching 
going back and talking about the only thing I remember the one pride. Okay. A long time ago, when and this is when I fell in love with Pride when I watched Rampage Jackson versus Wanda Silva. Wanda Silva was hands down the Wanda Silva is actually one of the main person that got me liking MMA. Me too. Because <laughs> the way he fought, the way he fought, I was like, bro, that's a motherfucking vicious killer right there. Dude. So he was like the Mike Tyson back then. I would yes. say I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me. No. But to me, I feel like he was a Mike Tyson of MMA, MMA back then. Yeah. Dude. But now we got a completely different, I think, like all that steroid use that he was using back in the day caught up to him. So, but yeah. What you that mean, fight man? between him. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that fight between him and uh, and Rampage Jackson when he, I love you, Rampage, don't say that. <laughs> but, but that fight was good. But when he uh, had him laid up on the ropes. Yes. And then, then Rampage came back, got his redemption, and then ended up knocking on UFC. Oh. So, like having that kind of having those kind of fights is actually like the best fight because you could be like, yeah, I, I got beat by this guy two times. Yep. In Pride. Yeah. But then that one time he come back and in UFC, I knock, I get my, I get my redemption back and I knock him out. So that's like those are. Those fights are like the type of fights I like to watch. Man, those those are amazing, man. That fight, honestly, that that uh, Rampage Vanderlei two um, is up for me one of my top Pride fights of all time. Like that is right there in the oh. mix. It's an amazing fight, man. Um, and last thing, what's the best fight movie you? What, what, what what's the fight movie we should watch? The best fight movie. Uh, damn, I just watched one like not too long ago. It was a dope ass one too. Damn, fuck, I can't remember. I watched like so many damn movies, but all time favorite movie, Bloodsport. It's on Netflix now. <laughs> yes, yeah. I just saw that. And, uh, but damn, I'm trying to remember this new one that I just watched. It's dope as hell. It's, uh, it's that Asian, it's that Thai guy. Uh, Raid Redemption? He, he, it's not that one, but he was, he was a guy on there. But that movie is, that movie is cold though. Amazing. Yeah. That movie is cold though. Yeah. This is part yes. one. One was cold, that little guy with the long yeah. hair. That, that the man who starts doing shit. this shit. Yeah. Yes, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he beat up everybody. Then he killed his, he killed yep. his boy. Yeah. That, movie. that guy yep. was cold. That's what's up, man. Well, look, man, Anthony, bro, thank you again for your time. Um, where can people find you? Uh, so we, and again, again, 1,000%, man, thanks again. Where can they find you? And uh, parting thoughts. If you guys want to follow me, you can follow me on IG. I'm Anthony.NJOKU, A-N-I, at uh, IG. You can also catch me on Facebook, Anthony Jokowani, on, on Anthony Joku, actually, I'm sorry, on uh, Facebook. And I also got Twitter, Anthony and Joku. On Twitter. It is, man. Oh, so, yeah, you follow me on those platforms, man. I'm here. <laughs> I ain't going to work. They're 24 7. Well, brother, thank you so much again for your time, man. I hope we get to do this again. And, uh, so, yo, much, much success in the real. For, honestly, the rest of your career has been amazing, but for continued success. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you for having Absolutely. me. I appreciate that, yeah, bro. Cool, man. All right, brother. You too. All right, guys. All right. That was my conversation with Anthony and Jikawani. Yo, that was a good one, man. Uh, I had a good time talking to him. I, and though, to me, those are my favorite, man. When I have an opportunity to actually sit back and just have full-blown conversation, man, um, and where it just feels natural, to me, that's the best, man. Cool dude. Super cool dude. And I really hope I have an opportunity to speak to him again on the show, man. But uh, with that being said, uh, this has been episode 206 of the Fight Podcast. And this is episode nine live, man. So we'll keep the party coming. Thank you again, once again, to Hot Mike. And uh, yo, thank you guys for your time. Uh, this is Serge, the host of the Fire Podcast. See you guys next time.